Now, effective exchange rate. This is a very interesting concept and a very important concept in today's day perspective where we have rising inflation. Now, there are two types of effective exchange rate. One is nominal, the other is real. As in the case of GDP, we have understood nominal and real GDP. The details have been discussed in our complete lectures link below. The idea is to understand how the need or the nominal effective exchange rate and the real effective exchange rate work. Now, real effective exchange rate is the adjusted uh, exchange rate for the weighted averages, right? However, the nominal one is unadjusted to its weight. And how do we understand it? Nominal effective exchange rate simply says that when you have the normal currency in your domestic country, the value of that currency appreciates the nominal exchange rate, the nominal effective exchange rate would appreciate as simple as that. That means if my domestic currency appreciates, in that case, what would happen? In that case, the nominal effective exchange rate would appreciate. However, if my domestic currency depreciates, in that case, the nominal effective exchange rate would depreciate. That means a nominal effective exchange rate is a very simple unadjusted weight average of the country's exchange rate to the multiple foreign currencies that exist. However, the real effective exchange rate is the one which is adjusted or the weighted average of the external currencies. When I say weighted average of the external currencies, what does that mean? I can say that this real effective exchange rate would be equal to the country's exchange rate raised to n into country's exchange rate rate raised to n into 100. So here let's say this is country A and this is country B. For country A, I say 60% of the market share is hold. That means it is the country's exchange rate raised to power 0 0.60. For the other country, it is 40%. So it would be the country's exchange rate raised to power 40%. 0.4. Now this 0.6 and 0.4 denotes the share of the total uh, trade that happens with this country. I take it in a very simple example. For example, there is a trade that exists between countries of US and European Union. Now consider that US currency becomes very cheap in contrast to the European Union. What would happen for European Union? For European Union, the imports would all of the sudden increase or increase in number. However, the exports would decline because exports get expensive. Now, because the exports get expensive and imports become more since they are cheap because the exchange rate has declined, I would be importing more and therefore the country of uh, the region of European Union would lose its trade competitiveness. So this region is no more competitive for trade because it is extremely dependent on United States. Now consider that 60% of the trade happens with United States. So what would be the real effective exchange rate? That would be the the, the currency of United States raised to power 0.6 multiplied, let's say, with India, so that's the INR, and the per proportion of trade with India, let's say, is 0.1, and then you have other countries multiplied by 100. So that's how we calculate the real effective exchange rate. However, the nominal one is un adjusted. It is not adjusted to how much trade is coming from which region. Now since the real effective exchange rate is adjusted to how much trade, how much trade is coming from which region, right? How much trade is coming from which region? It ensures the fact what? It ensures the fact that the trading partners play an important role in making the trade
trade competitive that means if my real effective in exchange rate would decline or my rer would decline the trade competitiveness would increase that is what i can say in summary however the nominal uh, exchange rate the nominal effective exchange rate rate would only determine the amount of domestic currency and if my domestic currency is rising in the market then the nominal effective exchange rate would rise if my domestic currency falls the nominal effective exchange rate would fall and that's the only thing that we need to understand in this scenario a very very extremely important topic in light of the trading partners so very important thing is the proportion of trade with each country so under the rer which is the real one we take the proportion of exchange with each countries however in the case of nominal we only take into account the currency exchange again if i want to relate the nominal exchange rate and the real effective exchange rate i can say real effective exchange rate would be equal to the nominal effective exchange rate divided by the price deflator so nominal exchange rate divided by the price deflator would be equal to the real effective exchange rate and that's the basis for this lecture today we would be covering many interesting sessions in economics in our future lectures stay tuned